Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Something a little bit different. A very good friend of mine, Joel, um, a real top G, has had this guitar for as long as he can remember. Uh, it's a very sentimental guitar for him. His father bought it for him. And at the time it was his sort of dream guitar. There's sort of all sorts of things sort of wrong with the guitar. Um, mainly the frets needed doing, you know, to make it playable. But not only that, the finish on the top is, you know, it's absolutely fine really. Um, but on the back, uh, there's all kinds of mess going on. So the original paint on these, it's, you know, it's really awful kind of finish that these factories use on modern guitars. Uh, it's basically just, it's a plastic coating all over the guitar. And as the wood sort of shrinks uh, in, you know, in various conditions, um, the, the paint itself just separates from the wood, uh, flakes off in huge chunks. Where the paint is flaked off um, underneath this vinyl here, you know, you get a lot of sharp edges, so, you know, it's catching on your clothes all the time. And so just sort of a rough, you know, clean up of this guitar is not really my style. I'm not a repair guy. Um, you know, I'm a guitar maker, not really a guitar tech or anything like that. So this is basically the start of a refinished series for this Ibanez 540R Custom. And well, the first step for this guitar is to take all of this finish off. And we've all been there. You think you, what you need is paint stripper um, and you cover this stuff in paint stripper and what it does is sort of takes a microscopic layer of the finish off um, each time and then eventually it gets to a point where it doesn't seem to do anything to the paint at all. Uh, the reason for this is because on well, Nitro Morse is a nitrocellulose stripper. It's not designed for stripping plastic and it doesn't really work. It's a really messy business trying to use paint stripper on guitars like this. And you end up really having to sort of sand the finish off, which is just a ton of work. And well, really it's unnecessary and expensive. So, you know, Nitro Morse isn't a cheap product. Uh, so I will show you how to remove a finish on a mass produced factory made guitar um, which is basically covered in plastic. Uh, as you can see this guitar is a right state, uh, it's got all kinds of vinyl, it hasn't got a back plate on it, it's just a bit of vinyl. <laughs> uh, it's just been a workhorse for Joel for many many years and um, we're going to try and make this guitar Bring it back to its former glory. Uh, it's pretty easy to strip all these bits off, you know, the uh, sc screwdriver and a spanner here and there. Wrench if you're in America. Uh, we'll refurbish any parts or replace any parts that need replacing. And by the time we're done with this, it will be as sort of new. Joel's got ideas about colours and, you know, how he'd want it to look. Um, but I have my own ideas about that and, well, my tendency is just to completely disregard what the customer wants entirely and just go, do my own thing and um, experience. Uh, I think this is like a sort of candy apple sort of blue, I don't know what you'd call this, uh, but basically it's sort of a silver, um, a silver undercoat. Uh, with like a translucent blue over the top uh, which gives it that like metallic look. Uh, I don't know whether whether this paint itself is actually metallic paint or it's sort of a traditional sort of candy apple um, technique that has achieved this effect but we'll find out when we strip it off and um, well hopefully stripping this thing won't really be um, won't really be much of a sort of 
job in itself might take a little time to get it off but it should all sort of be pretty straightforward he says um, having not tested any this at all I've not tried to strip any of this off already I'm just um, completely going blind into this but with my experience with these finishes um, I think I'm pretty sure how it's going to go down so stay tuned so stay tuned and we'll see how this goes so if you're watching this video anyway you can be pretty sure that it sort of does go according to plan and um, so the, the tricky trickiest part of this is sort of preserving um, any original decals so there are some decals on the back of the neck here which I will want to preserve if, if possible uh, again you know using nitrum or stripper on things like this is a uh, pretty dangerous business because here we've got binding um, on the neck which again is made of plastic the quality of these factory made guitars is not the best they do charge a lot for these things they have to keep their profits profit margins as as large as they possibly can um, because there are shareholders and CEOs and all kinds of useless people like that involved in these companies um, who obviously just want your money that's all, really all they care about so they do as little as possible they use the cheapest materials they can get away with and really the quality is sort of their last um, consideration when they make these things to be honest really all you can do with this is sort of sand the finish off there is no other way around it without removing the binding replacing the binding and all of that uh, which isn't actually a massive deal in itself but we'll try and preserve as much originality in this guitar as possible as we go let's get going and um, see how we get on with it uh, if this was a nitrocellulose finish on here um, you could literally just wash it off with um, thinners cellulose thinners um, um, also you know with nitrocellulose it's not really hard to sand it's quite easy to sand a nitrocellulose finish off a guitar uh, but the best way is to sort of strip it off without affecting any of the wood so once you start sanding around edges you can easily sort of affect the shape of the guitar itself and the contours and we really don't want that we want to preserve the guitar in its original state and all we want to take off is the paint you know if you want a painted guitar a lacquered guitar nitrocellulose really is the only sort of finish i would ever recommend on any sort of musical instrument uh, these plastic finishes are just not very good at all they're incredibly sort of durable for a while uh, so it you know it's good for the manufacturer because um, they don't have to sort of worry about the finish getting damaged before it hits the shelves uh, but then a few years down the line you know it does sort of start to cause problems and they're, they're virtually impossible to fix the problems without totally refinishing the whole guitar uh, so we'll get into it now I've changed my camera angle so you can see what's going on and we, I'll start to remove all of these parts when I was a, a young guitar player this was really sort of the guitar that everybody sort of dreamed of um, other than those sort of gems and uh, you know the Joe Satriani sort of models it was everybody's every young guitarist dream to, to own an Ibanez just to have that Ibanez logo on the headstock was enough it was like the dream um, but as an adult um, I do see you know I, I see them for what they are now and it, they don't really excite me that much but maybe this will sort of reignite my passion for these kind of 80s 90s uh, sort of models which were iconic back in the day 
Uh, I could never afford guitars like this myself. Uh, I don't think Joel could either. Uh, but fortunately, he's got a wonderful bloodline, and you know his dad encouraged him in music a lot, and still does. Um, so Neil, you know if you're watching, uh, respect to you. So we'll get this stripped down now and get on to removing the paint. Hopefully it won't take too long. I don't want to be in the workshop all day doing this. Um, it's Boxing Day and it would be nice to just be at home chilling like everybody else. But unfortunately, I have to take life by the horns and get on with some work. And you could really help me out now by hitting the subscribe button. Uh, leaving a like on the video, uh, leave a comment, what, you know, what, any thoughts you might have about this process and I'll be sure to reply and argue with you for um, several days uh, happily uh, about why I think you're wrong and I'm right. So yeah, anyway, let's go on and see what problems this guitar is going to throw at us. You can bet your life there will be some. I've got a little wide chisel here which will be pretty useful, um, a couple of scrapers, uh, you know I think these three items, chisel, scrapers, will be enough for us to get this finish off here. This isn't really a video to teach you how to strip a guitar down, obviously it's just undoing screws and So there we go, body all stripped. Took about two minutes. And now just the tuners on the headstock. As with the vinyl on the back of the guitar to cover the cracks, uh, Joel's friend has also sort of made this vinyl cover for the headstock. Which is pretty cool. Made the guitar a bit sort of custom, but it has seen better days, and it's it's all going to be stripped off. Like I said, I'd like to preserve the original sort of decals on the back, the serial number, uh, made in Japan. This one. But you know, it's it's not really that important. We could just get some new decals decals made up. And that's it, the guitar is stripped down now. Uh, there are some other parts, the locking nut, uh, the neck plate, I do have those around. The only sort of tool I'm going to use other than those is a heat gun. So this finish is plastic, uh, hopefully it should come off pretty easily. Uh, really, you know, even if you haven't got a heat gun, without accepting any liability for your actions, I'll say you could just throw this thing in a fire uh, and, you know, take it out and get a, that will just sort of get all the paint off. Uh, you just sort of get the job done with what you've got. And as I say, heat is all you really need to get this off. without damaging the guitar itself. So, you know, you want to restrict the heat. If you're heating a headstock, you don't want to be blowing the heat this way at the fingerboard. You really, you know, you keep it, the heat flowing that way. Um, but really any sort of, there's very little sort of damage you can do that can't be fixed. Uh, obviously you don't want to sort of start melting the, the binding on here. I may just stick some masking tape around this just to sort of protect it a little bit. 
Uh, if I set fire to this tape, it's going to be a problem. But as I say, nothing, there's nothing you can do that sort of can't be fixed. This binding is plastic and you could replace it with something a bit better and refinish the whole neck. So I'll start with the headstock here, get this vinyl off that's been stuck on. Uh, we'll see what the headstock looks like underneath this. Uh, this stuff doesn't take a lot of heating up to come off. I'm not sure if this headstock has a plastic binding on it, it may have. Let's get that warmed up a little bit and see what's happening. we may actually get away with not having to finish the headstock. You know, maybe we could just sand it down a bit, give it a shoot of clear lacquer. There we are, the original logo is looking a bit... Sorry. Uh, the vinyl itself has pulled the actual paint from the logo off, which has been um, screen printed on there. I'm not gonna start screen printing logos. Uh, our main focus right now is to get all this off the body. And so you just heat this thing up until you see it stop, it'll start bubbling up. Basically it's melting. So you can see it's starting to bubble up here. And there we go, you see, this candy apple finish. Has a silver coat underneath and a translucent blue over the top. Uh, it really has got to be hot. You don't want to be scraping at it. But as you can see, just from that, a couple of minutes heating that area up, it just comes off in big chunks. And as they cool down, uh, they go rock hard. And you'll be surrounded by flakes of plastic. So, you know, it's already down to bare wood here. And you can see how easily this is just gonna all come off. Uh, 
you have to keep it hot. As soon as it's cooled down a bit, it will get harder and harder to scrape. And you don't want to be fighting it. You can see, I mean, it's pretty easy to actually get off. As I say, the plastic coat is not really adhered to the wood as such. It's just a hard coat of plastic all over the guitar. And once you get underneath it, it just comes off with no problem whatsoever. And anyone who hasn't done this before, your instinct is to use nitro, uh, nitro remorse paint stripper or some sort of paint stripper and you're just getting the right mess, you think that's the only way to get it off, you assume it's paint, it's not, it's plastic. And you just end up in a right mess, just rags and rags of nitrous, nitro moss everywhere and it gets on your hands and burns your skin and it's really, um, it's really not a nice product to work with, harmful to the environment. Um, as I say, it's designed for stripping nitrocellulose paint, but even that, you don't really need a paint stripper to strip nitrocellulose paint. All you need is cellulose thinners and you can wash the paint off. So here we you just need to sort of warm it up and it will just peel back. quite satisfying to do. It will come off in huge chunks like this. There you go, it's silver underneath with a translucent blue on the top. It would be really easy to um, recreate this same colour. So maybe that's what we'll do. I do have other ideas uh, to make this guitar really special. I'm sure you can probably guess what I, would, I am planning on doing to this guitar. There's really only one thing. If you're refinishing a guitar of this style, you know, this particular Ibanez, there really is only sort of one thing you would do to it. Uh, maybe, you know, leave a comment what you would do with this guitar, what colour you would refinish this guitar. And I'll look at your comments, maybe you might change my mind as to what I have in mind. Uh, but I'm guessing a lot of you will come to the same conclusion that I have. You know, my instinct, my instinct for this guitar was pretty rapid. It was straight away I knew what I would do to this guitar. I was a massive Joe Satriani fan as a child, growing up playing the guitar. So there's your clue as to what I plan on to doing with this thing. There we go, the top is completely stripped now. Uh, a little bit of sanding and it'll be completely clean. No dings, no uh, gouges. Uh, I'm not sure what this wood is, sort of base wood, older maybe. And really, I hope that's sort of shown you how easily you can strip these mass-produced guitars for a refinish. 
You could sand this down and have it a natural finish. You could, you know, paint your own design on. A uh, brilliant thing to do with this, I don't know if you're aware of this um, artist, but uh, there's a woman, Julie Rosenberg, she does some amazing artwork, uh, amazing sort of modern artwork on guitars, and you could get somebody um, with her skills to do an absolutely amazing paint job on this. Uh, but yeah, basically, so that's how easy it is to strip um, a polyurethane finish on a guitar. Uh, you know, you don't need any products or special skills, just a little bit of heat. And without any more talking, I'll strip the back and the edges. Heat guns are incredibly useful things in guitar making. Uh, they've got a, you know, glue, wood glue. If you're removing a fingerboard, this is really all you need. Uh, they've got to removing dried glue, you know, squeeze out where you didn't intend it or you forgot to wipe something and you've ended up with a hard glue. Um, just get a little bit of heat from one of these and you can just get the glue off quite easily. Uh, vinyl wrapping a guitar is not really a great idea. Uh, you know, these factory guitars, um, they rely on people like Joe Satriani playing these things um, so that everybody else wants one. They are not particularly sort of well made. As you can see, the inside of the cavity there, and this is stock. It's just a mess, a right mess. Uh, the bottom isn't flat. Uh, the I don't know what they've done here. Sort of, you know, this, it's like they've um, like drilled out around where the pots are here for some reason. I don't know. The top, it, it isn't thick. 
you know, a pot, like a CTS pot, you could have sort of a five mil um, top on here and the pot would go through absolutely fine. This is about three or four mil and they've still taken out areas around here. I, I just can't explain why. It's just a mess. They're shielded with this awful paint, shielding paint. Um, hopefully when we put this guitar back together, I can clean that out, this cavity a little bit better. Uh, sort of maybe glue in a plate to thicken it up a little bit and shield it with copper tape. Uh, it's gonna be tricky to get all the paint out of these cavities without sort of a shave hook, um, but I will get all of this paint off the inside of these cavities. before refinishing the guitar. And there we have it, ladies and gentlemen. The body is completely stripped. Uh, it's really easy to get off. It's a bit of tricky around these bits. Um, so, you know, I found like a sort of potato peeling kind of method is best around there. But there's no gouges in the body. They've obviously used some really thick kind of filler on the body before painting. Uh, especially around here, it became sort of apparent and um, this has obviously saved them having to sort of finish sand the body before finishing it, uh, which you need to do, you know, if, you, if you're using a nitro finish, you've got to get the thing prepped and perfectly sanded before you start. And with this plastic coat, like I say, there's a filler underneath it. Uh, they, so that saves them having to sand properly. I still need to get into the cavities, get all this out here. Um, I'll do the best I can, it doesn't really matter too much when we paint it, this will all be sort of covered up anyway, but I will get out as much as I can, uh, get this foam out of here, and any paint out of here, but that's it, the body's done, really nice, just needs a bit of sanding now, and we can get to sort of finishing it, repainting it, um, I won't be repainting this until like the spring, summer. I don't really want to be using nitro in this workshop during the winter, but I'll get this sanded up, prepped, ready for finishing. Uh, the headstock, it was just the same process. It was a little bit dip more difficult to get this off here. I'm not sure whether it was a different sort of lacquer on the headstock, I don't know, but it did come off in the end with a bit of, you know, a bit of, um, I just went at it with that and it did come off quite easily, but not in the same way this did. Uh, it's more sort of scraping. Oh, but it really only took a few minutes. And as I sort of expected, the binding didn't survive the heating up process. In fact, when it got to a certain point, it would flash and literally burn like a fuse, fuse like a bomb fuse. So it would set off a little bit and then it would start burning along. So. Maybe someone can leave a comment, let me know what these bindings are made of. Some sort of acetone or, I don't know, like a, maybe like a nitro. I suspect it's some sort of nitro cellulose based plastic, like golf ball material, um, which is also made out of nitro cellulose. Uh, so once that flashed off, the smoke would be pouring off it and I'd run out of the workshop in case, you know, it's some sort of nitro and a few whiffs of that and I'd have been, um, I'd have been on the floor. But it came off pretty easily, really. The, uh, so we need to clean up this binding channel, replace the binding on here uh, before we, you know, finish the headstock, which is no big deal. So it's all pretty clean. Uh, like I say, just needs a bit of a sand before we get to refinishing this. Uh, hope you enjoyed the video. 
you know, if you're planning on stripping a guitar, you know, maybe this has helped you, hope it helps you out. And, you know, watch out for future videos in this series and we'll get to finishing this guitar, I'll show you how I, you know, go about finishing guitars with rattle cans. Uh, I'll tell you all about, you know, the best paints that I've found in rattle can. You know, I'll tell you all about the best paints that I've found for um, finishing a guitar with nitrocellulose without having all the proper, you know, spray gun booths and all that stuff. Uh, but I'll get into that in another video, future video. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Stripping this 540R. Uh, from our friend Joel. And um, please leave a like on the video. Subscribe to the channel. And I'll see you in the next one. I've got all these plastic flakes here. You know, I'll, I'll, I'll just go and throw that directly in the ocean now. And uh, any any manufacturers, I'm not, you know, obviously when they choose these finishes, they're not thinking about quality or other than, you know, being able to get these things done as quickly as possible, like say, without having to sand the body and all that stuff. They're not thinking about tone. Uh, they're not really thinking about the environment, although, you know, perhaps nitrocellulose is is possibly not the best um, product for the environment anyway, but you know, I don't know. So leave a like on the video, please subscribe to the channel and watch out for future videos of this series to see how we get on with this build. Uh, hopefully I can bring this guitar back to, back to life and looking like a million dollars, like it deserves, like Joel deserves, you know, he loves this guitar. And, uh, that's it, basically, I'll see you in the next video. Uh, I've currently got a base giveaway up, um, ending, at, ending on New Year, so, you know, if you subscribe now, you're in with a chance of winning that base. And I shall see you in the next video. I set fire to my masking tape there, as you can see. So, until next time, guys. See you on the flip side. Peace.